conmueva tus dulces manos y ese manto que te cubre me cura también por años ese temor que te tengo es temor de enamorado cuando esta cuerda se corte ya quiero estar a tu lado Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Just to let you know, we will be beginning in 10 minutes. So thank you. Cuando usted la escucha 
noche crecida en sombras Recuérdeme un poco lo lejos que estoy Cuando usted la escuche crecida en sombras Recuérdeme un poco lo lejos que estoy Hello, everyone. We will be beginning in five minutes. So please, uh, for those of you who have not taken your seats yet, take your seats now, please. Thank you. No samba, só fica parada No canta, no samba, no polinina Sabe deixar a mocita de louca Baiana, aquela que entra No samba, de qualquer maneira Que mexe, remexe A nona nas cadeiras Já deixa a moça Com água na boca Baiana, que entra No samba, só fica parada No canta, no samba, no polinina Sabe deixar a mocita de louca Baiana aquela que entra no samba de qualquer maneira Que mexe, remete a nós nas cadeiras Já deixa a moça com água na boca A falsa baiana quando tá no samba Ninguém se incomoda, ninguém bate pão Ninguém aberrola, ninguém grita ola Sabe Bahia senhor Mas a gente gosta quando na baiana é quebra direitinho de se baixo e baixo e vira os zulinhos e te são Sofia de São Salvador. Baiana que entra no samba só fica parada, não canta no samba, não polinina, sabe deixar a mocita de louca. Baiana aquela que entra no samba de qualquer maneira. Que mexe, remexe, a nós nas cadeiras Já deixa a moça lá com água na boca Tom, tororom, tom, tororom, tom, tororom Tororom, tom, tom, tororom, tororom Vai a naquela que entra no sábado de qualquer maneira Que mexe, remexe, a nós nas cadeiras Já deixa a moça lá com água na boca a falsa baiana quando tá no samba Ninguém se incomoda, ninguém bate pão Ninguém aberrola, ninguém grita oa Só vai Bahia senhor Mas a gente gosta quando na baiana Requebra direitinho de se baixo e baixo E vira os olhinhos e de São Sofia De San Salvador Para o pão, pão, não, não Para o pão, não, não Para o pão, pão Para pa pa, para pa pa ro ro, para ro, para pa pa, para pa pa, Bayana ke. Good afternoon. Guests, faculty, staff, please stand for the presentation of the Anglo-American University School of Journalism, Media, and Visual Arts graduates.
please be seated. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Anglo-American University, welcome to our guests and congratulations to our graduates. My name is Anthony Murray. I've had the great honor of teaching many of you over the years, and today I have the honor of serving as the master of this ceremony. We are here today to celebrate your accomplishments, made even more special by the uh, adversity that we've faced during this last year and a half. Uh, you have all been a tremendous, you've all had a tremendous impact on AAU with your energy, with your creativity, leadership, and above all, scholarship. You have a lot to be proud of, and I am sure that you will continue to make us all proud of you well into the future. Now I'd like to introduce the members of the uh, AAU community who will be taking part in this ceremony today. Firstly, I cannot see any of you, uh, President Stepan Mueller. <laughs> the Dean of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Tony Ozuna. Assistant Dean of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Algebieta Klatova. As well as our student speakers today, Ify Insoha and Alexander Mielnikov. Say hello, Ify. And our wonderful musicians, we're very grateful to have you here today, Marta Tupferova and Gabo Nas. I can add just a couple words before we begin with this. Uh, the scholar and poet, Omar Khayyam, who lived 1,000 years ago in Persia, the beautiful country that gave us pistachios and rose gardens, uh, he saw each human life as a book, a book written by the hand of God. A book, and this is the disturbing part, in which we cannot turn back, this is getting dramatic. <laughs> is that because I said God? <laughs> A book in which we cannot turn back the pages, it only goes in one direction. Uh, and in his Rubaiyat, a thousand years ago, he gave us the following quatrain, which uh, I live by this, actually. The moving finger writes, and having writ moves on, nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And 1,000 years before Omar Khayyam and Persia lived, the ancient Romans gave us this adage, spend your whole life learning how to live. Spend your whole life learning how to live. I woke up this morning with these two quotes or these two thoughts floating around in my head. I wanted to share these with you. In a sense, I thought it was a little bit of a, the yin and yang of today's ceremony, if, if I can put it in those terms. That on the one hand, there is no turning back the clock of time. Uh, this is the end of a chapter of your life right now. And on the other hand, your transformation is far from complete. Spend your whole life learning how to live. You will be changing. This is, in fact, equally the beginning of a new chapter of your life. And I suppose the idea that I wanted to share before we move on with this was that I believe this is, a, this is also a, a wonderful thing, this is a beautiful thing to divide one's life into chapters in this sense. This is in fact how we create a creative life, how you can turn your life into a work of art in fact. And one of the means of doing this is in fact by dividing it into these chapters to make your life interesting for yourselves, to make it fascinating for yourselves, and equally to make it interesting for those around us. So. 
Yes, I think that's the main idea. Anyway, uh, I know me, I'll start going on in that. So anyway, now it is my pleasure to introduce our beloved and esteemed President Stepan Mueller to give us a few words for today's ceremony. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid my speech won't be as poetic, but uh, it will be more practical, I'm afraid. Uh, <clears throat> uh, dear guests, uh, dear colleagues, especially you, dear students, we all gathered here because today you are officially completing your studies at Anglo-American University. My sincere congratulations on this achievement. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to open this festive gathering at the end of which students will become graduates, ready to enter their future careers, equipped with the knowledge and insights gained in Prague on the premises of this beautiful campus of our Paris of Learning. It is a significant event for all of us. I have been president of this university for almost two years, and this is the first ceremony where I can meet with all of you in person. The pandemic has made all personal contacts virtually impossible, so your graduation is a new experience for us as well. You are graduating at a time that has been unlike anything we have known in the past. In March of last year, we had to close the campus practically overnight and change the way we have been teaching from personal presence in class to online instruction. The ensuing lockdown virtually paralyzed all personal contexts that are so important for university life and which contribute to the formation of student personalities as much as teaching. It's true that you have enjoyed student life less than your predecessors, but on the other hand, you have been through a real school of life that no one has ever experienced before. I believe that such experience may be found useful later in your lives. I would also like to take this opportunity to remind you that the modern world requires all to continue your education, even after you have formally left school. Lifelong learning is not just a slogan, it is a requirement of our time because knowledge is becoming obsolete at an accelerating pace. People in my generation could still count on remain, uh, remaining in their chosen field of employment or business for virtually their entire active lives. Today, the world is changing practically before our eyes, and those who resign themselves to further their education and update their knowledge will not stand up to the competition. And no one can predict now what knowledge and skills will be required 10 or 20 years from now. However, when I read these sentences, I realized that I'll be speaking to graduates or students and soon graduates from the School of Arts. And I'm not so sure whether these words also, you know, fit for the artists because it's more about talents, about... But nevertheless, I think that even you who will, let's say, spent the rest of your life in, in arts and, and uh, furthering your talents, will eventually have to go back to, to some schooling or instructions because the world is progressing so fast, it's almost unbelievable. AAU has given you a good foundation to build on. And I would like to thank your teachers who are here, who have passed on their theoretical knowledge as well as professional and life experiences to you. 
My thanks also go to the administrative staff for their personal attention to each of you. I think the pandemic has brought the entire AAU team even closer together, and I'm very glad that we, as a university, have been able to come through this difficult time with honor. After graduation, AAU will become your alma mater as university graduates have called the school they successfully completed since the Middle Ages. Alma mater that you should be proud of and that will be proud of you. And we, of course, would be very happy if you stay in touch. Finally, I would also like to thank your families and friends. They have accompanied you throughout your studies, created for you a secure background, and supported you with their love, often also financially. They are deservedly a part of your success today. I wish you a happy and contented and successful life in the years to come, and much success in your practical and personal life. In life, it is often important to be lucky. It is said that luck comes to those who are prepared. And from today on, it's you. Thank you very much for your attention and good luck. And thank you, President Mueller. Now I'd like to invite Dean Tony Ozuna to the podium to share his remarks, as well as announce the school awards. I don't know if we, if we should wait for the uh, gen gentleman to finish his work. I didn't wake up with a Persian poem in my head this morning, so I'm not going to outdo Tony. And I think you have another speech at the end, right? Even a, a bigger one, a better one. It's only noted, it's only noted on the program that I will have some remarks. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank all of the AU dignitaries who are here, um, AU BOT trustee member, uh, Mikhaila Prosko Chilova, and uh, any others who, who are here, founders who, who may be here. But I really want to first of all thank you, the students, um, and the guests who are in, in, in attendance. Um, I'll talk to you for the next five or 10 minutes. We've made it, we've, uh, it, it, it's been a long time. It's been a struggle to, to be able to have time together. So we're meeting in a small informal group <clears throat> because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has kept us apart for more or less over a year, altering three full semesters. The pandemic brings concerns that have not only gone away, and some of you were deeply affected by this more than others. Some have lost family due to the pandemic and not being able to travel, as in the past, so easily and naturally to see loved ones who have gotten sick or before they have passed away, even for final services. And it has made this period much harder for many of us. Many students, your peers, cannot even be in the country now. So I think that we are among the lucky to be able to be here today in this courtyard, with or without rain. Uh, still, we can gather together for one more time, and, and it's nice weather, we should be grateful, uh, together, uh, to come together one more time in celebration of the conclusion of your studies at AAU. Uh, before I move on, can <clears throat> before I move on, can we have just a moment of silence to acknowledge those not as lucky as we have been, so um, not to overlook those who have passed away due to COVID-19, those around the world. Let's please be silent for just a few minutes. Okay, thank you. It seems to me that graduating in these times is a bittersweet deal. 
It might even be easier to remain as a student in these times, which are so uncertain. You might be thinking this, and of course, be worried about it too. That said, whether you have realized it already or not, I'd like to remind you of something <clears throat> that we tell you in orientation. It is told to you by the many departments, including a promise from your school of study that we are here to support you whenever you need anything as a student, and we do really try to fulfill this promise. I'm pointing this out now to also thank the less visible or lesser noted personnel making their efforts behind the scenes at AAU. I'll call them the unsung heroes, per se. And I'd like to point out just a few, uh, not often enough thanked in public, um, and never, never or nor, nor hardly ever formally at a graduation ceremony. So I'd first of all like to thank the assistant deans at all schools. And so for us, Alzbeta Klatova, the assistant dean of our school. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the student services office staff who are all around us behind the tent and, and, and who've made all of this happen so wonderfully. And um, And finally, a great big thank you to Stepan Muller, our outgoing president, the best president of all, in my opinion. I've been long enough at the school, I think, to, to when they started the, the title of president, I've seen, I've seen them all, and he's the best president of all, in my opinion. Uh, so that's the truth. You've done a tremendous job for us, Stepan, and we're really sorry to see you go. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Mr. Tony Murray, our Master of Ceremonies this afternoon, as a great uh, representative of the faculty, someone who you voted as best lecturer of School of Journalism, Media, and Visual Arts last year. And that's for his film classes, creative writing, and composition one and two, and all the other things that he teaches as well. Uh, he is a lecturer uh, that you cannot forget, someone not only knowledgeable and humorous, but a positive role model. And not only Tony, but many others that I cannot name, them all personally here, but I thank uh, them all as faculty. Ted Turneau, you're here, thank you very much. And Tomas Schubeck, you're here, thank you very much too. Just to name a few more from faculty officially, or uh, after the vote, Rob Warren, who won this year's best lecture of the School of Journalism, Media, and Visual Arts. However, um, because of the way the voting went, um, Rob represents the journalism students, and so there wasn't an arts lecture uh, on that list. So I wanted to just make this decision on my own on behalf of uh, the many student projects as a thesis advisor and our project curatorial mentor. Uh, to point out a big thank you to Piotr Sikora. <clears throat> and, and, and as the Art Studio Project mentor, the artist lecturer, Jana Babinsova. Okay. They, bo they both put in so much to help, uh, help you uh, at the end of this year. And if we had a separate awards for them for visual arts, and I think next year we will, they deserve it. Just a few more moments, points, and uh, to make an invitation. So now with graduation, you as, a, as students, graduates, you're losing all of this support, which we've been trying to offer you and, and in fact have done it, whether you've realized it uh, or not. Um, and, it, and this is, we've been here for your benefit. Um, now that you're going to go off and no longer be a student, you're free, free from us, free from this, unless you stay to do an MA degree, and uh, in this case, welcome again, for those of you who want to do that. Yet for those who are going off to other pursuits, I'd like to point out still the vast network of support that AU alumni or current students can still provide to you. I'll give you just one example of how it works in practice. Yasmin El Madawi, who is one of your peers, also had her final art project exhibited at Meat Factory in early May. And you can see some of the selected paintings of hers after the ceremony, as a few art students have brought their works for an exhibit today. 
it's opening after this ceremony, and it's in the, in the room in the back. We've all set it up there. You have to you know, wiggle, wiggle through uh, those wires. Yasmin did her paintings on campus in the room upstairs. We have art studio uh, uh, just reserved for students to do her paintings. And she has these large paintings, and she, she had to do, do them on the floor. They're beautiful to look at, but they're painful stories that they hold. <clears throat> the stories within these paintings are very painful. Uh, they were done as, a tri as tribute to deaths she witnessed in the bombing of Tripoli 10 years ago when she was 16 years old. And it had taken her like 10 years as well just to be able to get back to, to co coping with this. Yasmin got funding from a, uh, from a foundation, the Bargell Art Foundation, for producing a series of exceptional paintings, and they were exhibited within an installation of red candles. When I talked to Yasmin last Friday, when she, when she brought her paintings back, she told me that she had been asked to become a curator for an exhibit <clears throat> that opened last weekend for a festival called Tribe um, for different groups, nationalities of creative artists in Prague, and she'll be doing several of these over the year. She invited one of our graduating students for this exhibition last weekend, Mary Palancar, who is sitting here. And Mary also has works in the art studio for you to see after the ceremony. Mary is a painter and she makes installations and her work for the finals about food and the ritual of preparing meals, honoring the dead, chickens, f fruit, the, we, we have to accept that too. And, uh, and it's our nourishment that we nourish on. In the summer, Mary has been invited to show her work in a restored palace in Poland, invited by one of our faculty. I hope that she goes to this. Um, by one of our faculty, Eva Zurakowska. Two other art students also here today have works for you to see. There's Anastasia Mazurenko with her horror bride suspended from the ceiling, and Alexander Melnikov with paintings from his series, The Room of Laughter. Alexander was, I don't know if it's a secret or tell you later, Alexander was awarded the Visual Arts Scholarship, or no, was awarded the Visual Arts Scholarship for this uh, project from the donation of our anonymous sponsor. So. Alexander was organizing already exhibitions with AAU students in his first year, including a series of exhibits at the Karla Vivari Film Festival, at a cultural space in Zhishkov, and on the rooftop of Mai, the major department store in Nadu. He did that twice. These are examples of our students inviting each other, cooperating on, on, on projects with students from all nationalities. The works of these students are here today here today, we're all exhibited at Meat Factory in May as final art studio projects. Normally, we would invite everyone in the community to go and see, but they were limited uh, due to still the, the restrictions at that time. But still, please take some time to see at least selected works from these after the ceremony. That's the invitation. That's part of this. That's it. Um, and then the motto, 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 in short, using these students, now graduates, as example. We accomplish much more by working together, by cooperating, and by helping each other. We do it naturally here, and we are glad to keep in touch with you graduating students to continue in this way too. You are the seekers, both as young aspiring journalists and writers, or as artists, curators, or beyond, citizens of whichever country you decide to settle in. You are the BA programs that are possibly the most idealistic, but also greatly inspiring to be with and to help or to guide. You can help each other by keeping in touch and sharing with your contacts and opportunities as they come along. Whether you are Czech or from another country, AAU should be thought of as a second home for you in Prague. You come from many different countries to be in this city and to study at AAU, learning together and learning from each other. It's a good test run for the rest of your life. I'm almost done now they coming to the end. Uh, most of you sat here three or four years ago and met me for the first time. I was giving you a speech for the orientation of your studies, standing more or less, or actually I was probably standing where, I'm, where I'm, I should be sitting. I never repeat those speeches and they are not written down in advance. Th those are simply improvs. Uh, but for sure I've never told students this. It was over 30 years ago, in autumn, 
and it was the first time I was in Prague, sitting by myself on Streletsky Ostrov, Shooter's Island, that's the one between Kampa and Old Town. I was just marveling at the astounding beauty of the city on both sides of the island, and Kampa was on one side, Old Town on the other, and I was looking at uh, Charles Bridge connecting the two, and I thought to myself, God, I'd love to just stay here longer. And I was just thinking how, if it would even be possible, what I would do. Um, and this was even a few years before AAU, previously AEC, AEC even existed. And, and I, I wasn't part of that initial founding, founders group, but, uh, but I was here. And I managed to make this happen, meaning I have stayed longer in Prague, if anything at all. But as importantly, I'm around people who I like to be around. And if you want to call it something corny, like a dream come true, this one did happen. And well, here I am today, not too far away from that exact spot on Streletsky Ostrov, across from Kampa, where I sat 30 years ago, now wishing you good luck and thank you for the chance to help you along in this most special phase of your life. Enjoy it and, and, and take care. And uh, here's a quote by John Lennon to end. As John Lennon, the musician and artist, is the namesake of the Lennon Wall, our journalism student's magazine. He says, he said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think now I just seg into still two more parts. The best thesis awards. So the winners of the best thesis award for 2021 is first of all, Alexander Melnikov, BA Visual Arts Studies. <laughs> the title of the th thesis was uh, The Room of Laughter, Search for a Russian queer art, students are supposed to do um, art projects, and Alexander did a fantastic one, and then there's a thesis that goes along, it, it gives a theoretical, historical uh, component for that. And the award is for the thesis on, on this one. Uh, the next one to Samuel Coulter Stone Dempsey, BA Journalism of Communication. <laughs> Samuel's thesis is uh, titled A Divided Agenda, An Ethical Analysis of the American News Media Coverage During the 2011 Libyan Intervention. And Samuel uh, wanted to work especially hard on this one to go to a graduate program in international relations in Belgium or Holland, one of those, uh, and good luck. And so it, this, it proved he did a great job on this one. Last year's Best Thesis Award went to Ghana Zadan for BA Journalism and Communications. And that was titled The Role of Broadcasting Media in Creating the Image of Vladimir Putin. Okay, so now I have one more thing. Moving on, it's my pleasure to ask our dear musicians here to play another song. We have here with us Marta Topferova and Gabo Nas. Marta is a well-known Czech and, Ameri and American who is most popular as a singer in Spanish, playing with many Latin American and Spanish musicians as well as some Czech groups. Gabo Nas is from Argentina, based now in Berlin. And both Marta and Gabo have come from Berlin to perform for us. Marta will now play her song Sesta Domu, or uh, in English, The Way Home. And for those who, who don't understand, won't understand the Czech lyrics, it's about someone looking for their true home. Someone who was a bit weary of busy city life, who went to the forest and mountains to find peace and had a revelation that their true home was inside of themselves.
dlouho jsem tě hledal Ve všech koutech zemských cest Marně čekal v lidských srdcích I ve slávě velkoměst Vším úsilím v skutku znavem Jsem se nechal svést Čas plul jako mořská bárka Osamělá bez plachet Já nevěda, co tu dělá Nechal jsem se unášet Když na jednou ocitnu se jako ve snu kouzelné, vzácná chvíle boží vůle, to já srdcem spatřil jsem. Oči koní, studny stezku, flaštovčí radostný vzlet. Dar nebeský požehnání, svatozář v nich uvidět. Konečně jsem si tě našel, domové můj vysněný, v tajné jeskyni své duše, do posud v ní pohřbený. Konečně jsem si tě našel, domové můj vysněný, v tajné jeskyni své duše, do posud v ní pohřbený. And Gabo. It's beautiful. Everyone, please uh, join me now in welcoming our student speaker, the inimitable Ify Insoha. All right. Okay, so um, I wrote this down because people know I'm long winded and I didn't want to have you here all day. So let me tell you a story. A long time ago, there was a man who had three servants. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To the second, he gave two. To the third, he gave one. And he tasked each of them with simply using what they had to gain more. Then this man went off on a trip and returned after being away for a very long time. The first servant had turned their five bags of gold into 10. The second, turned two into four. But the final one hid the gold away because of the circumstances and the hard times they were going through, believing that he should simply preserve what he had. Their master was displeased with him, but happy with the first two and took what the third had and gave it to the first, knowing he would use it better. Class of 2021, AAU staff, friends, family, the difference between the first two people and the last was one thing. And that was faith. The first two looked at what they had and saw more than what was before them. But the last could only see what was in front of him. And because of this, he squandered his opportunity. Right now, many are confused, jaded, cynical, and tired. Very, very tired. We've been through an ordeal. Whether it's not being able to see loved ones, the smell of one's room during lockdown, or a bad internet connection during an online exam, we've really been through it. 
as graduates, and even the world as a whole, we're at a crossroads. So much change, so much shifting in our lives, and this is the moment where we most need faith. Faith, as it has been said, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is more than just a religious idea, it's essential to life. We keep going because we believe better is possible. We love because we believe others are worth it. We work on ourselves because we believe we can improve. We breathe because, though unconsciously, we believe that it will keep us alive. From the mundane things of our everyday lives to the greatest accomplishments of man, life is all about faith. Faith is a way of seeing. It's seeing beyond what is present to what is possible. Sometimes it's even in believing in what appears impossible. As a Christian man, that is the foundation of my very life, believing in God, Jesus Christ, who overcame the evil of the world through the cross and rose again to conquer death so the world could be transformed and that one day he would wipe the tears from every eye. Wild? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Crazy? Sure. And while I can give you many philosophical and theological reasons why I believe the fact that it is crazy is actually part of it, what makes it significant. See, at one point, man, it was crazy to think a man would ever go to the stars. It was crazy to think a computer would ever fit in our pockets. It was crazy to believe, though I told all my friends who were Warriors fans that it was going to happen, and it did, so suck it. Um, it was crazy to believe that LeBron and the Cavs would beat the Warriors down 3-1. But they did. It was crazy to believe, or so I'm told, that KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, will be better in the Czech Republic than in Kentucky. Crazy to think that we're closer to the dream of Martin Luther King than we've ever been despite the obstacles. We're closer than we've ever been. Is it crazy to believe for a better future, for a better world? Is it crazy to believe you can change the world? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Is it wild out there? Of course. But you cannot live life simply looking at what is now. You have to look at life believing and what could be? Are there obstacles? Yes. Do we often fail? Definitely. But we fall down, as one wise man once said, so we can learn to pick ourselves back up. And that takes faith. It took faith to get through online school, because that was hell, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it took faith well, it is taking faith because it's not over. It, it's taking faith to get through this pandemic situation. And it took faith for us to get here today. So don't give up on tomorrow. Friends and family, I pray that God will give you the strength and courage to face what's before you and lead you on the right path. And that no matter what you face, you will dare to believe. Thank you. I've always suspected I'm crazy iffy, but now after listening to you, I am sure, sure of it. So thank you. It was, it was good. Uh, absolutely. Good. And uh, now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. The names of the graduates will be read by Assistant Dean Alžbieta Klatova. Thank you. Sorry, I just I will just adjust this a little bit. Okay, can you all hear me? This is the important part, so you should hear me. <laughs> okay, so um, we will start with the with graduates of the academic year 2020 and 2021, and the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Communications will now be conferred upon the graduates of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Anglo-American University. Samuel Coulter Stone Dempsey. <laughs> mm. 
Nicolas Italo Fontana. Kristýna Jandová, cum laude. Yeah. Julia Charlotta Kierdorf, magna cum laude. Jana Malisheva. Irina Nikolaeva, Ify Divine Soha, cum laude. <laughs> Evgenia Pichanina. Stanislav Pres, Daria Sidigalieva, and Jaroslava Virvič. Degree, the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Visual Arts Studies will now be conferred upon the graduates of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Anglo-American University. Connor Christopher Drew. <laughs> Anastasia Mazurienko, cum laude. Alexander Melnikov. Mary Elizabeth Palenker. Kristina Pupavac, summa cum laude. Kateřina Stehlíková, summa cum laude. Diana Žekenová. And now we will con continue with graduates of the academic year 2019-2020. And the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Communications will now be conferred upon the graduates of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Anglo-American University. This is the longest sentence. Uh, Temir Asanov, cum laude. Ron Jishinsa. Anel Kadirová, cum laude. <laughs> Natálie Kejhová. <laughs> Anna Kindiaková. <laughs> Francesca Popa. Janel Umbareva. <laughs> and Hana Jadan, magna cum laude. The degree of Bachelor of Arts in Visual Arts Studies will now be conferred upon the graduates of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts, Anglo-American University. Liberta Dergam, magna cum laude. Saskia Litvinova.
and Claire Elise Turno, cum laude. <laughs> okay, congratulations everyone, and you can start with the celebrations. Good. Uh, thank you, Algebieta, for taking my notes and for everything. Good. Uh, <clears throat> it is my sincere... Wait, Algebieta, you were clever. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce the newest alumni of Anglo-American University. Students, please move your tassels from the right side of your caps to the left side of your caps, signifying your status as graduates at this moment. Iffy, did you do it? Good, just checking. Okay, good. Uh, yes, and uh, yes, if I may, uh, Tony, I don't know, you coerced me into this a little bit, I guess. Uh, I'll add, I would like to add a thought, another thought, as if you didn't get enough from me already this week, uh, that I had um, uh, having the honor, really, of getting to be a part of this, uh, at least for myself. In Iffy, you made me nervous because I'm going to do this without reading it. So this should take about 45 minutes, but I'll try to make this as, as really, I'm joking, as brief as possible. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, one of the thoughts that I had this week, uh, it, it forced me to think about my graduation when I got my bachelor's degree many years ago. And I distinctly remember myself having the thought that I am about to enter the real world in this moment. I, I truly remember thinking this as if, Janelle, the first 23 years of my life were a weird dream or something like that. So, but anyway, uh, if you'll allow me to offer up this one last argument with all of you as a friend, uh, I would like to argue that in fact, uh, based on my life experience, so I'm serious about this argument, uh, I believe that in fact, it is the exact opposite and you are about to leave the real world on this day, right now. And what I mean by that is I sincerely believe, uh, and I, I mean this with my life's observation, my life's experience, that uh, when we are given the freedom to think and to learn as individuals, not as nationals, not from any place, as individuals, when we are given that freedom without the economic pressures, without political pressures, without cultural pressures, any of the other pressures that, that bear down on us, when we are given that freedom, we love and we appreciate and we are inspired by all of our differences. That in fact it is what is different about us that excites us, it, is, it makes us better people, by being in contact with people different than us, and that in fact, uh, I sincerely do believe above the, theory, above the theory, above the paradigms, I believe that the greatest gift that we have here at Anglo-American University is in fact that we have a relatively small community and we are so wonderfully diverse. I mean, we are, we are a small, tight-knit group that comes from so many different places, and we have so many different backgrounds, and it has been uh, sincerely one of the great joys of my life to be a part of this community and to laugh together, to, to see the things we do together. Uh, Yusuf, as a matter of fact, I met with my friend and student yesterday and learning about the Tribe Fest and learning and seeing how, again, Everybody, and Yusuf, you are living the AAU mission by doing that. It's everybody is from different places, everybody's from different countries, and they're getting together and sharing that. And I really believe this is a great power that we have here at AAU. And uh, yeah, simply put, to have the weight of xenophobia lifted from us, this fear of the foreign, anything, fear of foreigners that. I will provocatively argue so many of our countries, so many of our ethnocentrism instills this in us. And that is a great, great gift to have that lifted, to, to have this 
bubble that we've created here and to have that that fear taken away and it's been it's been such a joy to see you falling in love with each other befriending each other you can come from mexico or czech republic and be fall in love with each other these are wonderful things to see and really it's been great to see that so uh let us not forget that i guess to to wrap up this ceremony and hang on to that in life so as you enter the unreal world you always remember what's real right so tony there seems to be a theme today perhaps we're both having a crisis with reality and dreams i don't know uh but with that said uh with that said i would like to thank you all for joining us today thank you for the guests the family thank you to everyone who has been watching this online through the streaming because you couldn't be here today and i agree with everyone here that we really are a special family and a special group of friends that we've created here so thank you all please join us near the cafe for a champagne toast to toast the graduates which should be nice and uh thank you all once again for joining us today have a good afternoon and take care thank you all very much and now i will ask the students to please go to the park to take your group photo